There are a couple ways to do this. I'm pretty sure I know how the college board wants us to solve. They want us to recognize that this means to take the two equations they give us above, uh, give us above and multiply them, right? That little dot there, I know it's tiny, but that's our multiplication dot. So if our functions f and g are given, and in function f, b is a constant, so we're going to try to find that. If f times f of x times g of x is equal to 9 to the fourth minus 26 x to the third minus 3x squared, what is the value of b? So uh, you could just kind of write that on your scratch. So x squared plus bx times uh, 9x squared minus 27x. And that's going to equal this other thing. Now, I, instead of writing it next to it, what I'm going to recognize is I'm going to have to FOIL this thing out. And I, I want to know where that B kind of gets played into things. So it's going to come into two places. So if you play it safe, you might just FOIL everything. It's not the end of the world. So this is going to be 9x to the fourth minus 27x to the third plus 9bx to the third. So we can't combine those easily. And then minus 27bx squared. Now the reason I didn't write out the other thing is I want to see how the two compare. So the 9x to the fourths compare easily because they're the only x to the fourth terms. Now we have one x to the third term in here and so that means that these two things together, we can't combine them right now because we don't know the b, but the 26, negative 26 is what we would get so we can use that to our advantage or we can just recognize there's only one x squared term and it's negative 3x squared. So what has to happen here is this negative 27b has to equal negative 3. So I'm doing it this way also because there are lots of questions in the SAT that, especially they've been doing this more recently, where like you have to understand the properties of things and how different terms are going to look when you manipulate an equation. And so it's not really about solving for x or even solving for b in a, in a traditional algebraic way. It's about understanding kind of how things match up. So recognizing that this is a foil and then kind of compare situation helps us. So now you could just look at the choices. What times negative 27 is going to give us B? It's definitely going to be a fraction. Uh, so that's probably C. But we can even solve negative 27 uh, B equals negative a third. Divide by negative 27. Divide by negative 27. Your um, negatives go away. And then 3 over 27 reduces to 1 over 9. So there it is. I don't think it's so hard to do. Uh, it, it works. Um, now, if you have no idea what's going on, though, I'd rather you spend more time on this question and get it right than worry about some of the ones that are going to come later. So what you could do is pretty traditional. Go to Desmos and type it in. So it's going to be a pain, but we're going to do it. F of X. Uh, can I use this? Let's see if my keyboard will work. Please work. Ugh. No. See, I have a keyboard. It doesn't. Oh. It did work. There we go. Perfect. I don't want to type this. x squared plus bx. Now it's going to have this problem. We'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Uh, oh, now it'll make me deal with it. Um, and then g of x is equal to 9x squared minus 27x. But I don't care about f of x or g of x. I care about f of x times g of x. And see, it puts the dot in when I time the, do the times. And I want that to be equal to 9x to the fourth minus 26x to the third um, minus 3x squared. Okay, so let's look at that. That's chaos there, but let's turn off the g and the f as is because I don't care about them. But you can kind of see I've got this red line and this black line. And since f times g, f of x times g of x is supposed to give me the same thing as the red line, this 9x to the fourth minus 26x to the third minus 3x squared, I want these things to line up perfectly. Clearly they do not, but that's okay because 1 as b was never even an option. So basically I'm just going to try to do the different b. So I could do negative 26 and I see, again, they don't line up. The blue, uh, the black and the now, uh, oh, I don't want the purple. The black and the red are completely different. So okay, let's, that's clearly wrong, right? I'd cross that out. And then um, I'd go back and I'd say, what about negative 26 over 9? Again, they don't line up, so that's not right. How about negative or positive 1 ninth? And look, where did my black one go, right? So look, if I turn off the red now, it's the same. You can see that they clearly overlap, right? Now I could zoom around and just be really sure, or I can just say, well, what happens if instead of 1 ninth, I made it regular old 9, and sure enough, Completely different. So there you go. Still one ninth. Um, I, you know, I I don't I don't know. Is that more time consuming? Like I I think for most people who understand what's going on, the algebra is going to feel very natural. Um, but I don't know. Put it in the comments. I mean, even if you knew what to do with the algebra, 
What do you think of that Desmos solution? Would you rather just do that? Is that somehow safer? Is it faster? I'm kind of torn between the two. I think even if you want to use Desmos here, you kind of have to know a little bit of what you're doing and what they're asking. So that still requires some deeper knowledge that the algebra requires as well. But, you know, maybe that having a visualization of what's happening is just easier for your brain. And if that's the case, then that's what Desmos does best. It lets us visualize things and see the literally the shape of a graph and compare shapes. That's very, very basic.